confirmation bias. This fascinating little quirk has its roots in psychology, dating back to the days when scientists first started analyzing how we process information. Imagine you're a detective. You search for clues not to determine who done it, but merely to confirm that it was the butler in the library with a candlestick. It's like wearing rose-colored glasses while keeping a blindfold on. You only see what reinforces your beliefs, ignoring the rest. In a 1954 study by Peter Wason, participants were shown a series of numbers and had to guess the rule. They kept focusing on examples that fit their guesses instead of testing different ones. Spoiler alert, they were all wrong. So next time you're deep in a debate, take a moment to refresh your perspective. And remember, the truth might not be what your selective memory wants it to be. Anchoring bias. Ah, the anchoring bias. It's like your brain is an overexcited sailor dropping anchor at the first price tag it sees. This cognitive bias is heavily studied and goes back to the early 1970s, when psychologists Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky discovered that even arbitrary numbers can influence our decisions. In one classic study, people were asked to spin a wheel that landed on either 10 or 65 before guessing the percentage of African countries in the UN. Surprise! The participants who spun a higher number guessed higher percentages. So, if you're negotiating for a new car, just know that the first price you hear may steer you in a direction you didn't plan on. Beware of that shady anchor. Availability heuristic. This one sounds like it should come with a built-in app. The availability heuristic is how our minds tend to latch onto readily available information, like your Aunt Marge after Thanksgiving dinner. Coined by Kahneman and Tversky as well, this bias leads us to assess risks and probabilities based on how easily examples come to mind. For instance, after seeing a news story about shark attacks, you might start thinking the ocean is a personal assassin. But fear not. Statistically, you're far more likely to slip in the shower, which honestly is the real villain here. So before you start pacing the beach, ask yourself, is this fear justified or just the loudest voice in my head? Dunning-Kruger Effect Welcome to the world of the Dunning-Kruger Effect, where the least qualified often hold the loudest opinions. This bias was named after psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger, who found that incompetence can produce an inflated sense of confidence. The more you know, the more you realize you know nothing. In a study conducted at Cornell University in 1999, students who performed poorly on tests overestimated their abilities, while top performers underestimated theirs. So, if you find yourself on Reddit confidently advising people on how to build a shed after one weekend of DIY, remember that a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing, or at least a funny topic for your next podcast. Hindsight bias. I knew it all along. Ah, hindsight bias, the champion of second guessing. We humans have a knack for believing we could predict the past events after they've unfolded. Coined after World War II, it often makes us feel like omniscient beings capable of seeing all outcomes. In a study from 1975, participants watched a video of a football game and were asked to predict the outcome. Post-game, they believed they had accurately foreseen the result. It's like saying you knew the chicken crossed the road to prove she had points to make. Embracing this bias can lead us to forget the uncertainty and chaos that accompanied our decisions. Remember, folks, the next time you claim you totally knew who'd win the game, you might need to check that crystal ball for calibration, self-serving bias. If we're going to talk about self-serving bias, we might as well do it with a slice of humble pie, to share with ourselves, of course. This bias allows us to bask in the glory of our victories while dodging responsibility for our mistakes. Essentially, if you did well on that exam, it was because you're a genius. If you flunked, it was clearly the fault of the universe conspiring against you. Research shows that people often attribute positive events to internal factors. Look, mom, I'm a star. But negative ones to external factors. Darn you, professor. This isn't just vanity. It's an essential coping mechanism. So, go ahead. Take a bow for your successes. Just don't forget to cuss out that pesky textbook the next time things go wrong. 
sunk cost fallacy. If you've ever clung to that bad movie ticket because you've already paid, you've experienced the sunk cost fallacy, the psychological phenomenon that convinces us to persist in failing endeavors because of what we've already invested. Coined during the 1980s as economists analyze decision-making, it's like realizing you bought a fidget spinner and now you can't stop spinning it to justify the purchase. Studies show that people often throw good money after bad decisions, hoping for a change of luck. Just remember, like that pair of shoes you bought at a 75% discount, some things are best left in the past. So when in doubt, ask yourself, is this decision grounded in future potential or a desperate clinging to past mistakes? Bandwagon effect. Jumping on the bandwagon, it's like adding your two cents to a group outing to the amusement park. The bandwagon effect shows how we tend to adopt beliefs and behaviors simply because everyone else seems to be doing it. This cognitive bias is widely studied, dating back to political campaigns in the early 1900s. Researchers found that individuals are swayed by public opinion, often leading to conformity. In social media culture, it can't be missed. When something goes viral, even skeptical friends find themselves in on the fun, whether it's a silly dance challenge or the next avocado toast therapy trend. So, the next time you catch yourself picking up a catchphrase that just everyone's using, ask yourself, is this the trend I actually believe in or am I just riding the wave? Optimism. Bias, it's the glass half full syndrome. The optimism bias leads us to believe we are less likely to face negative outcomes while being overconfident about good luck. Scientifically studied since the 1980s, it turns out we're all a bit like overly positive puppies who can't fathom the concept of rain. This inherent bias can lead to risky behaviors, like ignoring health advice or venturing on a roller coaster, labeled death-defying. Interestingly, a 2013 study showed that almost everyone believes their life is better than the average person's. And spoilers, we can't all be above average. So, embrace positivity, but sprinkle in a little realism. After all, the rain doesn't last forever, but it does make for a magnificent rainbow. Framing effect. Ah, the framing effect. It's all about perspective. How information is presented impacts our decisions and judgments. Coined by Kahneman and Tversky, again those two, this bias shows that how a problem is framed can lead to different outcomes, even if the actual problem remains the same. For instance, if 90% lean meat is marketed, it sounds healthier than saying it contains 10% fat. Think of it as the magician's sleight of hand for your brain. Later studies found this effect can even influence important decisions like healthcare or finances. Next time you're sipping your coffee and debating the fine print of your phone bill, remember that context is king, or at least a crafty little devil trying to sway you. Found this video interesting? Then leave us a like and subscribe for more videos like this one.